second of all, I was still shaking and upset. So I really, really did want to get into the cab. <laughs> like, I don't care if I didn't trust the guy or not. Everything happens for a reason, right? So especially when we're, especially when we are, just especially for, okay, so in my circumstance, especially when I'm, I'm doing all of this in faith, so it's a little bit easier for me to discern what's coming from him and what's not coming from him. So with that being said, I was praying that something's got to give. I don't want to walk to the Broadway station. I want, you know, I need a ride. <laughs> like, I mean, I was going to all, all kinds of things. So I get into the cab and, um, and ironically, I actually knew this guy from when I was on the street. He gave me a ride a couple of times. And so once I realized who it was, then it really wasn't that big of a deal. And um, so we had like a really good talk, finally calmed down um, and uh, on the way to the airport. The problem is, is the guy wanted $60, you guys. Like I had like, I don't even know. I think I had just a little over $300 in my account, if that. Yeah, it, well, I actually think that that time it was 160 because I got the 300 while I was here. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So, anyways, so, um, he wants $60. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm leaving. I'm going out of town. Like, why? Like, you already know who I am. You know, you know me from before and I, I haven't seen you in, in a couple years but I, you know me and he's like, well, we can make a deal. You know, I'm like, no, we're not going to make a deal. And he's like, we can make a deal. I'm like, what kind of deal? And then I looked at him and I knew what kind of deal. And I was all, hell no, we're not going to make the deal. I'll pay you $60. So he was like, oh, okay. So we were on our way to the airport, get off at the airport. He got his 60 bucks. I left, he left. And, um, geez, that's just crazy stuff, right? You know, I mean, like, all I'm going to say about that is when you present yourself in one way, you know, um, then that's what people are going to expect from you. So, I mean, I can tell you something. I am no angel at all. Promise you. So, um, even in this journey, I have been absolutely no angel. Okay, so, but I didn't do nothing with the guy. Let me make that clear. I didn't do absolutely nothing with him. So we get out of the vehicle, go and stand in this line, right? So I, I stand there for like 10 minutes. And I get up to the counter and they're like, oh, well, you're at the wrong one. Like, it wasn't even for that. This was the beginning of the airport, whatever you want to call it, journey. This is the airport journey. journey. This is the leaving, that was leaving the hotel journey. This is the airport journey. So he's like, well, you're in the, this is not even Spirit, which is the one that I flew. And I say, oh, okay, well, I'm at the wrong, I'm at the wrong spot. And so um, I get it off, I like, I go inside go into where I'm supposed to go and I am standing there in line which there was not a line there was well, only one other guy that was standing there um the gate didn't open till five I think at that time it may have been about 3 30 ish um maybe right around four somewhere in there and this is in the morning and he was standing there and I swear it was some kind of rapper guy. I don't even know. I don't listen to rap, but he, it, just the way that he, I thought about it later, like the way that he was dressed, like his luggage and all that kind of stuff. I feel like he was some kind of rapper guy. And, um, and I, now I wish I would have kind of asked him, but I didn't anyways. Um, so he's like, well, you know, you can go over there and get your, your boarding ticket. You know, you already have one. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I'll go over there. So I go over there and by this time the line is growing. So I'm like standing, I think I stood there for like 10 minutes. So, um, or maybe even 15, I don't even, I don't remember. So I go over there to go get my boarding pass. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna get my boarding pass, go ahead and go on through. Well, that didn't happen. So when I get over there, there's a carry-on fee. Okay, well, with the carry-on fee, you have to have a credit card. <laughs> so, and my credit card was turned off. So I was like, okay, 
I'll go find an ATM machine. So I feel like I walked like a long ways to find the ATM machine. Now that I think about it, it really wasn't that long, but in that moment, in that time with everything that was going on that was happening, for sure, it felt like it was forever. Finally find the ATM machine, get the money from the ATM machine, go come out, go and stand in the line again, which the guy, the rapper guy, was already in the front of the line. The line was long, you know? So I go in and I stand in line again to get up to the person at the information desk or whatever you want to call it, um, for them to tell me we don't accept cash. <laughs> I was like, bleep, you've got to be kidding me, you know? And so um, she's like, no, but you can go right over there and there's one of these little credit card thingy me jiggy. You can get a, uh, a new card and come back over here. So mind you, I have wasted, I would say probably 30 to 45 minutes just in that one process of waiting in the wrong line, going to the ATM machine, coming back, standing in line again to talk to the lady to be told that they don't take cash. So then I was like, and I have to stand in line again? And she was like, yeah, but we'll be quick. I was like, all right, cool. So I walked over to the AT or not the ATM, but the little thingy majiggy um, to get a credit card and put some money on it. So the money that I took from the ATM, I put on the card. So um, after that, I went to go stand in line, but I was getting wiser. I thought, oh yeah, I don't have to stand in line. And luckily, I only stand in there for like three to five minutes tops when I realized look, wait, I have a credit card now. I can go over there and not stand in this line. So thank God for that, right? So I go over there, finally buy my boarding pass, go stand in line, get down there. And I was kind of worried about my bag. Like I didn't really bring anything in it that I needed to worry about other than like I was worried about um, some kind of liquid. In fact, the only liquid, I was worried about my perfume and then I was worried about some laundry detergent that I brought with me because I spent eight bucks on it at this store so I can do laundry at the other hostel. But as far as like shampoo, conditioner, lotion, um, all that kind of stuff, I left it because I knew that I wouldn't be able to bring it on the plane because the last time I flew, I learned that. So um, I left it at the hostel for whoever wanted it or whoever needed it after me. So when I got here, I didn't have any of that stuff. I mean, granted from all of the nights that I spent in the hotels over in Denver, I did uh, manage to um, gather some shampoo and conditioner, which I have been using um, up until today. So, um, so finally, I go stand in line, get through the boarding thing. They did take away my detergent, which I wasn't too thrilled about it, but whatever, it's I can get more, not a big deal. And so I get through, finally go to the place. I found the spirit terminal. I sat down and I was relieved. Like seriously, like I was relieved because I finally made it after all of that that stress and all of the not sleeping the night before and um, not sleeping well the night before that. And um, yeah, it's just, it was, it was relieving. So I'm sitting there and I hear this, oh, if you're boarding to Austin, you need to be at gate such and such, like 32 or 35, and I was at like 48 or something like that. I'm like, wait a second. What are you talking about? Like I'm thinking to myself, there's no way. So I pull out my ticket, I look at my ticket, and it says the gate that I'm at, and it says the gate that I'm at. I'm like checking, checking, and rechecking, right? So, um, I thought, no, there's no way that there could be no different. And when I got there, I said to the, the flight attendant or whatever those people are um, that was behind there, I said, this is um, the gate for Austin. She's all, oh yeah, later on today. You know, she wasn't very nice. So I was just like, well, whatever. So I sat down. So then I hear it again. This is your last and final chance to get on the plane to Austin. And I'm like, no way. 
<laughs> there's no way it could be down there. There's absolutely no way. And um, then they say it again, like really, um, like, I don't know. I just felt like it was talking to me, you know? So they're like, you real or anybody I'm telling you now, if you don't get down here right now, then you're, the plane is leaving. The gates are closed and you're going to be SOL. No, they didn't say SOL, but you're going to be out of luck. And I'm thinking to myself, oh no. <laughs> so I can't miss my plane. So I gather my things very quickly and I'm like literally like running down the escalator thingy magic. I didn't even jump on the, I should have gotten on the escalator. I didn't get on the escalator. I'm like running down the terminals, trying to get down a 35, which I think was like 12 terminals this way. And I get down there, I'm like breathing hard. And I'm like, is this the flight to Austin? And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, well, stop the plane. I got to get on it. And she's like, um, I can't stop the plane and I handed her my boarding pass and she says, oh, this is the one for airline whatever. And I just looked at her and I said, okay. <laughs> like, I put my head down and I was like, okay. So, um, like you have got to be kidding me. So, I sat down and I thought to myself, first I had to catch my breath because I was really, really out of air from running all that way. And secondly, I didn't really like look like a stupid bleep bleep going back to the terminal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really care what other people think, but um, I, uh, you know, I, th I think I was warned about something. So when I was on the, um, so you have to ride a train like underneath to get to the terminals. And so I was on this train underneath and Jesus has a way of pointing people out to me. And there was this guy, and this isn't the first time this has happened, but there was this guy that looked kind of weird, like, he, he he looked off like he was up to something like I don't know it's not my business you know I don't care to know just leave me alone you know what I'm saying but I knew to be aware of him and so um, I just thought about it and I watched where he went and um, kept my eyes open you know for whatever like to make sure that he wasn't following me or anything like that. And so I decided to stay there at that terminal because for one, I was out of breath and then I didn't want to walk back. Um, I didn't want to walk back looking like a, an idiot. Okay. So, um, then I don't even remember something said, be careful or watch yourself or something like that. And all of a sudden, that, that same guy comes running down the um, escalator, the, like behind me where I was sitting. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was the same guy. I mean, I only, he was running so fast that I, I only caught half of, like I only caught the back of him. So I'm pretty sure it was the same guy. And I'm thinking, what do I do here? You know what I mean? If he's running that fast down the airport, surely there's going to be somebody or not, if not multiple people calling. So I thought, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave a B and he had a bag on his shoulder. So I'm sure that he probably stole it, you know, um, but I'm sure that there's a million and, and, um, one people in the airport that are going to call or tell somebody you know, but it was like, I guess it was like a warning from the get, but I didn't know what he was going to do or anything like that. So moving forward, I sat there for a while, listened to my phone and whatnot. And